Sorry. Okay, yep. So let me just make a note to send it to you after I record it. Okay. Okay. That. Yep, I've got it recording. So we should be good now. Okay, that's good. Okay. Um, okay, so let's see. One second here. Let me get this started. Okay. Um, all right. So you saw somewhere, so that's fine. What tax software is it that you use? Drake. Drake. Okay. That's good. We're integrated with Drake. Okay. That was the question I had. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. We use Drake in our tax practice too. So I'm very familiar with it. Um, so between, besides you and your husband, do you have other employees or is it just the two of you guys or? Um, it's me and him are our 50, 50 partners. And then I have a nine year old daughter who is an employee, but she won't do anything in the system. She just literally cleans up and puts <laughs> files, places. Right. Right. Stamps out envelopes for me. Got it. Got it. Okay. Nice. All right. And then do you have any idea about how many clients that you have that you guys have? Um, it, right now it's probably anywhere from 50 to a hundred. 50 to a hundred clients. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. okay. We're consistently growing and that's right. the goal. So yes, um, get it where, oh boy. We're starting to try to remember everything and manage everything. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it's a good time to, to look into that. Um, and then my note said that you do tax prep bookkeeping and resolution. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, correct. good. All right. Um, so what, what brought you, what got you looking, looking for Adam? Like what was it that you were looking for? Um, I, I was primarily looking for something to, well, it started off where I am. I've started mailing out stuff to get my res, the resolution side growing. Mm -hmm. So I have to do some, do marketing. I hate marketing. But <laughs> um, and I, I realized as a, a guy came in last week and told me that he got my package in the mail. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, great. Awesome. Sure. Somebody actually got it and responded. Now, how do I track that? Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, crap. I haven't planned this far ahead. <laughs> so I've started just, okay, how, how, do I, how can I manually build processes around this to make – everything easier right and that led me to looking for a crm gotcha gotcha okay and i noticed on the atom information it says there is a, a prospect a prospecting toolkit so, uh -huh. yep and then everything else that goes with it because it's a one-person office so i really like the idea of somebody coming in and being able to sign in on the little um Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah the self-check-in screen. Okay. Yep. Um, and then, um, some, some, I need, I do need some kind of project management to make sure I'm just checking all my, all my dots. Sure. 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 Yeah. Absolutely. Because right now I use a list a, a physical list for every client and it's just getting, okay. I can't remember where I put the, put all these lists <laughs> list at. Right. And it would be much, better for me to have it have a better system especially as I'm looking at getting bigger and getting to the point where I want to hire somebody yeah yeah absolutely um now do you sneeze here do you take appointments yes and I do have have clients with the capability of scheduling their online appointments their own appointments online. And what are you using for uh, that? Acuity. Acuity? Yeah. Okay. Acuity for online. Okay. Now, do you have any type of client portal that you use for communication with clients or sending documents or information back and forth? Yeah. Right now I use Pascal, but I am looking for something different. Oh, gosh. I didn't even know they were still around. I haven't heard anything about them in a long time. Okay. I can understand why. Really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's great when you're getting started. Mhm. Mm but I've been miss that I've been missing notifications where the system's not sending me emails when clients upload stuff. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. So I'm sitting here waiting for a month for oh no a client to 
upload his bank statement. Mm -hmm. And anytime I think about it, I'm not where I can reach out and call and talk to him because it's like three o'clock in the morning. Sure, of course. When I think about it. And then he, I found out he, he uploaded them on the first or the second like he normally does. Uh. And I'm like, I never got notified. I'm looking, I, I let him know I'm researching different systems now to mm -hmm. get something that will correct this. Right. Oh, shoot. So, yeah, that's not good to be losing that yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's not, a, not the level of service that I want to provide to my clients. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. So that helps. Yeah, that helps a little bit as far as kind of what you're doing and what you're looking for. Now, are you, are you, are you paperless? Like, are you scanning documents and storing them? Or do you have folders for your clients? Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> a little bit of everything, right? Everything that comes in is scanned. Uh -huh. um, I do print out copies of tax returns, um, copies of a lot of the stuff. Just I have um, huge binders that I put stuff in. Um, some not so huge binders for the, the smaller smaller stuff. But I I'm, I'm very hesitant to go paperless because. Mm -hmm. um, about two years ago, I lost all of my records. That were stored digitally? Yes. Oh. Um, Where were they stored and, at? And it, um, they were... And I didn't... Oh, your, phone's, your, your phone or your microphone's cutting out, cutting out. I'm not able to hear you very well. I'm sorry. This That's phone's a, a little messed up sometimes. So um, I asked where it was stored. I didn't hear your answer to that. Um, it was stored on a local um, hard drive, uh -huh. and my husband—he's he, a computer geek. He did—he he just wasn't able to get it. I, my backups that weren't backing up to the right hard drive. So he's corrected that now, but I'm still just in case. Yeah. I, I print a hard copy just to appease my mind, really. Yeah, I can definitely. I mean, I understand that, especially after going through that, then yeah, you're definitely going to be more hesitant and cautious for sure. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Okay. All right. So I think that helps a little bit as far as, um, you know, like I said, what, what you have, what you're using now, what you're looking for so that I can, you know, tell you, show you what we have. So our software is, um, and I don't know if you, did you get a chance to talk to us much when you saw us at the conference or don't you? Or not really. Um, I really by. don't remember. <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's been a while. Um, and I was about seven and a half months pregnant, so I was completely miserable. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, so it, and it's just one of those. I remember the main thing I remembered was that clients can check themselves in. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. That just stuck in my mind. Sure. Yep. Absolutely. So we have a tax practice too, which is which is how Adam came about so um so i manage a tax, op tax office i'm an enrolled agent so I, I use this you know every day too so um our software is completely cloud-based so you do have access to it from from anywhere and from any device mm -hmm. so as far as you know like your husband being you know the techie guy there really isn't going to be anything for him to do to manage to back up to do anything we we take care of all of that Basically, when you purchase the software, you're provided with your own unique URL, and that's how you access the software. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and get logged in here. Okay, so this is an example um, of the home page. Now, the office events over here on the left-hand side is basically going to be the workflow, and you can go ahead and you can customize this for your office. So this is just an example that we have set up in here, but, you know, all of our offices do run a little bit differently, so you will be able to customize this for whatever works in your office. So this is an example of workflow for tax preparation. But then what you're able to do is you can set one up, you know, for bookkeeping, you can set one up for resolution. So these business types here, again, you can go ahead and you can customize and choose what um, business types you want based on the services that you offer for your clients. So, for example, switched it to tax resolution. 
and then you can have a whole nother set of office events or workflow items. So basically kind of replacing that, that list that you have, you know, to, to manage your projects and to manage your clients. So you'll have all of that set up in here. And same type of thing, you know, with bookkeeping. You, you can see how many clients that you would have in each one of these statuses at any point. You would be able to see, you know, any notes on the file, anything like that. Um, and you can also set things up as reoccurring. So like reoccurring tasks. So things that you, you know, do do every month, things like that. You can have it, you know, pop up and, and remind you, hey, you've got to do, you know, monthly bookkeeping for these clients, that type of thing. Yeah, that's really what I need. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, yeah that, that's exactly what we need. Like, I, I want it to be in my face, you know, I log in and I can see exactly what needs to be done. <laughs> so I don't have to go search for it or try to remember to do it. You know, if I can see, you know, you know, on some dashboard here of exactly what needs to be done. And this is obviously going to be a little bit extreme because it's, this is kind of designed for a bigger office for this example. But, um, you know, it can be scaled down, like I said, to, to whatever you need, you know, for your offices and for your needs. Um, so you talked about the marketing. Uh, is, yeah, go ahead. Is there a way to, um, like with all, I've really got four business types that I was, okay. that I'm thinking of. Um, is there a way to see what's due for everything at one time or is it just for each business type? Yeah, it's really going to be for each business type, unless you had each individual task you know, assigned to you. So you could have assigned tasks, but if you have, you know, 25 assigned tasks, it's kind of going to get overwhelmed and cluttered in your assigned task. And you would actually have to go through and assign each particular thing to you. Okay. So it's, yeah, you're going to have to switch it on the home page as far as to see what's going on with each service. And we would be able to, um, export your clients out of Drake and put them in here so that we would have a complete database of all of your clients to get started with too. Mm -hmm. um, let me go into a client's file and show you something here. So I'm going to go ahead and search for a client. So we got lots of different ways to search for a client. You can search by name. Access code would be a social security number or an EIN or if you're doing something like prospects or something like that, that you want to track, uh, we usually use like a phone number for an access code. So, okay. so we'll go ahead and search. So if we do a search, you kind of get a lot of information about a client just by doing a single search. So it's this one client, Michelle Bishop. You can see that she's, you know, a tax prep client. She can be a resolution client. She can be bookkeeping. She could be part of this S Corp. So you can see, you know, what services you offer for that client. We also do have, you know, invoicing and payment systems as part of our software. You can see the status of each one of those files that's going on for that client. I mean, you've got the phone numbers over here. So there's a lot of information, you know, just from that. Um, so you talked about doing some marketing. So another thing that we do have in our software is actually um, is a true referral system. So for each new client or each new prospect that contacts you or, or you know, walks through your door, like we always ask, you know, how did you hear about us? You know, was it, was it something we mailed out or, you know, was it an advertisement that we did? And we actually have um, reports that you can generate in here. So if you do, you know, some type of marketing campaign, you do mailers or something like that, you can actually put in there how much that you spend on that marketing campaign. And then if you, when each client or, you know, new prospect, you can see how much revenue you've generated based on that marketing campaign. So it'll give you a return on your investment. Okay. So you can do that. Um, so, and you talked about for prospects, so on the home page, you could actually create one of these business types. You can create one as prospects. And then you could create your own workflow to go along with those prospects. So, you know, it can be, um, 
call, calling, you know, calling the client, sending emails, you know, whatever it is, you can have, you know, notes about all of those in your prospects. Now, it sounds like you do have a website also, correct? Okay. Yeah. And that's what we would be able to do too, is we would be able to provide you links that could be put into your website and we can have different links for, for prospects. So if it's somebody who's, who's not currently a client, who isn't currently in your system, we've got ways for them to reach out to you to, you know, ask questions, request an appointment, get a quote, things like that. And then you can track all of that here within the system too. Um, and then we'd also have a link for our portal that can go out on your website also. So I can, I'll show you what the clients are able to do and see from, um, from the portal aspect of things. All right, so let me go back into a client's file. Okay, so we're going to Michelle Bishops. We'll go into her tax preparation file. So this basic contact information section, this is the information that is going to come over from Drake. So that basic demographic information that you're entering on screen one, names, addresses, phone numbers, that stuff will come over here. And because of the ongoing integration that we actually do have with Drake also, that means that if a client has a change to some of that information, a change of address, change of phone number, once you change it in Drake, and e-file the return, then it's automatically going to upload into the, or not upload, it's gonna update the client's file over here and add them too. So it saves you from having to do some of that double entry in two different softwares. And that's an automatic process or? Um, on the home page, so let me just go to the home page here. On the home page, we have this button for Drake Web Service Electronic Filing Data Import. So all you have to do is you can click this at any point and it will bring over all of that new information from all of the returns that you e-filed. Now, is that current year, past year returns, or all of them? Uh, all of them. So if, if a client okay. came in and you e-filed a 2016 return, that EF data would flow over too. Okay. Yep, and I can show you, like, um, you'll be able to see right within the client's file the status of that. So if I go to, so we've created a status in our office called awaiting IRS acknowledgements. We've e-filed those returns. Now we're just waiting on those acknowledgements. So you can see over here that we, we've gotten those acknowledgements for those returns. So then we know that, you know, we can move those to complete and we're done with them. So that, that comes right over. All right, go back to that client's file. Now, as far as, doc so it does sound like, um, you know, you are doing some scanning. Now, is scanning and document storage a piece of our software that you're interested in, or is that something you want to continue to do the way that you are? Um, I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> okay. Yep, not a problem. Um, you know, probably some of the advantages of doing something the way that we have it as opposed to you know on a local server is is the backups that we do have because we do have a company you know that that we've hired called liquid web and they are the one who hosts and does all of our servers and does all of our backups for us so that's just kind of another piece of security and something else that that you don't have to worry about on your end um, so within each client's file, we've got a couple different spots to store documents. We have a section called permanent documents. And in our office, we store things that we want to keep in the client's file permanently. So it can be social security cards, you know, driver's license, power of attorneys, things like that, that we want to, to stay in the client's file. And as far as scanning, you can do, um, you can use any type of scanner with our software. It doesn't have to be twin compliant or anything like that. So any type of scanner that you use is fine. Okay. And then the next place that we have for document storage is our account document. So this is going to be account specific. So I'm still in Michelle Bishop's file and I happen to be in her folder for 2016 tax preparation. So you can see here, all of the documents that we've scanned and stored into her file or PDFs that we've taken from Drake and saved into the client's file. So we scan everything. 
change the drop down to see the different years? Yep. Yep. So right here I can change. I can see things from different years or bookkeeping or yep. And resolution. So you can, it's very easy to just pick out another year and see the documents for that year. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it keeps them very, very easily organized and easy to, to navigate between all of those. That's one thing I don't like about Drake Document Manager. <laughs> nope. We didn't love that either. <laughs> um, so yeah, we actually do all of our document storage here. Yes. Okay. Um, so the upload type, so this is just going to be labels. So the upload types are, you can customize for, you know, whatever types of documents that you want to store into the client's file. And then the description, then you can just put extra notes on it too, if you wanted to. Now this column here for file access. So this is what's tied to our client portal. So each document that you upload and save into the client's file, you have three options. The first one is no access. So that, you know, you're probably just storing like W-2s, 1099, source documents into the client's file. They don't necessarily need access to them. So you can just label those as no access so you've got them. Then full access means that the client always has access to those documents through the client portal. And limited access is we actually have documents that you can set up for payment protection. So if you're using our invoicing and payment piece of our software, then you could set it up for payment protection, which means the client would not be able to access that document until they've paid that invoice, which they can do through the client portal too. Now, do you currently take credit cards in your office? Yep. yep. <laughs> do you have a credit card merchant that you're using? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'll show you, show you this too, but if your current credit card merchant is part of authorized.net, you would be able to continue using them and we can integrate that into the software and then we don't charge any additional fees. It's just whatever your normal merchant fees are. So you could do that too. We also have e-signatures. Do you use e-signatures at all? I did. I did for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and I may be going back to that this year. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I haven't decided. Okay. Um, it's just one of those. I really should. <laughs> What were you using to do those before? I had a um, Drake, just doing it in Drake. Oh, okay. Like through their portal, were you using Secure File Pro? Oh, oh no, I'm talking about when they're in the in the office. Oh, um, in the actual the signature pass. I've got a yeah. Pascal does not um, do them very well. Oh. Okay. It, the only thing it allows me to do is the actual signature on the return. Oh. Them signing the return. Got it. Which is annoying to me. <laughs> I want to be able to send the engagement letter and stuff like that. Yes, yes. Now the e-signatures within Adam, so Adam will allow you to set any document up for e-signature. You just actually, you know, have to know what documents e-signatures are allowed on. So for example, you know, like a 2848, the IRS isn't going to allow an e-signature yeah. on a 2848. But yeah, you can upload an um, an engagement letter and have a clients do the e-signature on that. A lot of our clients yeah. do that all the time. So, yep. So if you're uploading a document and you want to set it up for e-signature, you would just check the box over here that says e-sign client. And then if it's a joint return, then you would check it for the spouse too. And then I'll show you the other end through the client portal as far as what the client actually does. Now, if there's multiple partners, like I've been doing a partnership, mm -hmm. um, like book something like that do you have the ability to do multiple e-signs that way you would set it up probably through each either through the partnership so like let's say you know let's say this bnc for, so you can link accounts so this is okay. michelle bishop's personal file but she might be you know a partner here or part of this s corp here so yeah you can link files and then you can link documents that way too okay yep for sure um, the other thing we do in our tax office is we actually take PDF copies of all of our tax returns from Drake, save them into the client's file in Atom, and give them access to it through the client portal. So then when clients are calling us, you know, all summer long and need extra copies of their tax return, we direct, we Online basically print it yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. I said, yeah, sure. If you want to come to the office, I can get that for you, but I'll charge you. Or if you want to get it free of charge, you can go to the portal and get it yourself. So they're going to try to figure out how to go to the portal and get it free of charge, which is what we want. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so we always do that. 
And actually, we, we try to, you know, encourage our clients to go paperless, too. I mean, with each client, once I finish the return, I'll ask them. I'll be like, do you actually do you need or want a hard copy of your tax return or do you want me to just store it online? And you'd probably be surprised at the number of clients that just say, nah, just store it online. That's fine. So, I mean, that definitely saves us time and money if we don't have to, you know, print those returns and use the fancy folders and all of that. <laughs> yeah. So. So now on the other end of it to show you what happens through the client portal from from the doc from the client side. Okay. And again, this link can be um, put onto your website. Plus, when you um, when you upload documents and give the client access to it, or if you send set a document up for e-signature, the client does get notified. So they get a notifi notification that says, you know, a, a new document is available for you to view. Click here. And that link will take them right to the client portal for them to log in. And this will be customized with your logo. And then the client logs in securely using their social security number and a password. You can assign them a password in their file if you want, or they can always just click here that says I need a password or I forgot my password and then a temporary one will be sent to them. So we'll go ahead and log in. Now, what kind of password requirements do y'all require? For the portal, there is no, no requirements. Um, for you as a user to get into the software, it is like, you know, the eight characters, you have to have a capital letter, a number, or a special character, that type of stuff. So, so you don't if, require a secure password for the client? It doesn't have. So if we set a password, like if a client called or if they're sitting in front of me and they want a password, I'll give them a pass. I'll do something easy, like 1040. And then the first time that they log into the portal, it's going to require them to change their password. But there is not and, restrictions. And, and on my husband's a complete security nut. Oh, okay. So that's why, uh, and, uh, and one thing we do require on all of our portals is that they use secure passwords. And I'm trying to figure out if the clients will be able to use 1040. They could. I mean, Something. they could. They could use whatever they want. Oh, uh, okay. You know what? Now that I say that, let's play with it to make sure because I, I haven't changed the password. So let's go to this client's file. Oh, let's go back to Michelle Bishop. We'll change her password. So let's say I gave her the password of 1040. So I'm in her file. So I can either send her a scrambled password, and then again, she's going to have to change it, or I can physically change it. So let's make it 1040. And then I'll, I'll save that. I'll refresh my screen so it takes that. Then we'll go back and log in through the portal. Now that, you, now that I'm thinking about it, I think it does have to, but let's see. So we'll use that 1040, log in, and it says you're required to change your password. So let's see if I've made it something easy, like 1040. Yep, so it does. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep, okay, that makes sense, because we have to use do it that way as a user, so it makes sense that it has to be that way too. So yep, so that should make him happy. <laughs> Okay, yes, yeah, so I want to save that. Okay, so now I've changed my password. <laughs> okay, so um, so this is an, an example of what it can look like through the client portal. And again, you have the ability to to customize what link. Where's my refund? Like yes, that. exactly. So because we do have that integration with Drake, we actually have that EF data that flows right over. Um, and then we've got the IRS, you know, where's my refund link, the amended return, and... What state are you guys in? Uh, Woodstock, Georgia. Georgia, okay. And then you could put a, um, a state refund link there too. And then you would, you would have all of those acknowledged. So you can see we've got the federal acknowledgement and the state acknowledgement right here. So clients can check their own refunds. As, um, as far as these links, you can choose which links that you want out here. You can reorder them. You can remove them. So you've got control as far as what the clients can do through the client portal, depending on you know what features of our software that you're using. 
um, upload files, this is where the client is going to go to send documents to you. So they can, you know, just drag and drop or browse and put the files right there. And then what you're going to see on your end is on your home page, every time somebody does something through the client portal, you'll see it here on your home page. You know, um, somebody changed their password, a new document has been uploaded, a document has been electronically signed. So you'll see it here, but we can also set it up kind of like how it sounds like you have it set up or should have or trying to have it set up through your current portal is you can have it email you a notification too. So if even if you're not logged into the system and somebody uploads something into the portal and if you want to be notified of it, we, you can turn that on. So you can get that notification. Um, would this come up on my homepage, client portal messages? Yep. So right here on the homepage. So it's going to be right here under the office overview. Yes. Yep. So yes, that'll be there. But then, like I said, if you're not logged into the system and you do want those messages forwarded to you, you could have that happen. Okay, so back through the portal. Um, and the nice thing about the portal and, you know, kind of having as much information as you can within one software is, you know, any documents that are sent back and forth, any messages that are sent back and forth, all of that information stays linked into the client's file. So you're not, like, searching around trying to find documents or messages because if it's all being done through the client portal, then it all gets linked and saved there. And what if they send an email? Is any of that integrated into it? So if they send an email to, to like, a regular email address that you have, like, through Outlook yeah. or something, no. Um, because they're outside of Atom at that point. We're not integrated with Outlook. So you could, you could save. You could, you know, copy and paste that email message into the client's file, or you could save a PDF copy of that message into the client's file. Okay. So I know in our office we really try to do um, – as much communication as we can through the client portal, you know, number one for the security and then, you know, number two, so we've got that history of it. So, so we try to encourage less through email. Yeah, I do too, but there are some that just, they want to ask a quick question and I was looking for one last night. I was trying to find it. I know we asked it earlier this year. Uh -huh. I don't know when. And I'm trying to go back and I'm like, I'm mm. trying to figure out when. And I, I never did find the actual email. Right. What about texting? Do you or do your clients um, try or want to do any texting with you? They try. <laughs> it goes, but it goes to my email. Okay. The text, my, my husband set up my phone system. So the, um, the number to the office, um, if somebody texts it, it goes to my email and I can respond from my email. Okay. Okay. So I just manage expectations that it's not going to be an instant instant thing like normal text messages because it goes through my email. Right, right. Now we do have um, a texting feature as a piece of our software too, and it's all done through the system. So you would be assigned um, a specific phone number for for texting for your office. So you can send messages out. So like you said, like if it's a quick question for a client, you can just shoot them a text right from their file and they can reply to it. And again, it's going to show up right on the home page because it's all going to be kept within the system. So under the office overview where it says you've got three Twilio messages, Twilio is um, the company that we are partnered with for, for our texting. And then again, all of that stays linked into the client's file. Okay. So, and this works the same way as the portal, where if you wanted to get notifications, you know, if you were outside of the office or not logged into the system, um, then you could do that. Those could be forwarded to your cell phone, too, if you wanted. So, we've got that. Okay. okay, so back through to the client portal from the client's view. So, this is where they send you documents. You'd get that notification where it says my documents, this is where the client is going to go to view any documents that you've given them access to. Um, this is also where they're going to go to do e-signatures for anything that you've set up for e-signatures. So um, unlimited document storage, 
is included with our software. Unlimited e-signatures is also included with our software. So we don't charge per e-signature or anything like that. Um, so you can see here that these are the documents that the client's able to view. And again, you could sort them you know, for the different years or you could sort them through you know, the different types of files that you have saved in the client's file. And then we have the instructions right here for e-signature. So if a client, if you set something up for e-signature, again, the client's get the, gonna get that notification and they can come log into the portal. And the first thing that they wanna do is click on e-sign required. They are going to have to use a PIN number for that e-signature. And again, you can assign that PIN number within the client's file if you want, or they can click here and they can have a PIN number sent to them. So either way. Um, so what they need to do is click on eSign Required. So they would click here. They would select this box and fill out all of this information. And that all has to match what you have into the client's file. And they would have to select eSign Client. And then if it was a joint return, then the spouse is going to have to do the same thing. And then what, once that's been done, then what it does is it generates this, which is an electronic signature certificate, which is approved by the IRS. It does have the timestamp, so the date and the time, the IP address that was used for that e-signature, the form that was e-signed, and then the, all of the information that was verified. Mm -hmm. Then this gets saved into the client's file. You get notified that that client has done that e-signature and then that you know you can go ahead and you can e-file that return. So that's how our e-signatures work. You have any questions on those? Nope. Okay, awesome. Pretty star straightforward, so. Good. Um, this one down here at the bottom is an example of how it would be if you set you a- You need money to get it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you want to view, view this file? Well, we want to get paid first. So this is set up for payment protection. Um, so the client would be like, all right, fine, I'll come pay my hundred bucks. Uh, so it takes them here to the payment section and they, they can view their invoices and their statements. Um, they can pay with credit card or with e-check, like I said, as long as um, you're using a merchant that is part of authorized.net. Okay. So you could just check with your current merchant to see if they are part okay. of different merchants right now so. pardon me i'm looking at different merchants right now so. oh are you okay yep the one we actually happen to use um eps which is affiliated with drake that's what i'm looking at that's okay. what i'm looking at okay yeah they are definitely part of authorized.net so we yeah. work with them all the time and like i said that's the one we use in our office too so yeah and i think they've got pretty reasonable rates i mean we do pretty high volume of um credit card transactions so i know my boss wouldn't use them if they weren't reasonable <laughs> so so that's where the clients can go to to make their payments view view their invoices the my message section so this is like I said what we try to do you know instead of email to communicate through the client portal so we do have that history so this is where the client is going to go to view any messages that you've sent them or they can con compose a message to send to your office um, now, as far as the appointment, so like I said, we do have the um, appointment calendar scheduler as a, as a piece of our software, and then we do have kind of like what you have now um, where clients can schedule their own appointments. So we have two options. You can have it set up where they can request an appointment, and you can set it up to for them to give you some notice as far as how far out you want notice before they can actually schedule that, then that would come as a notification to you. You would confirm that appointment with the client. Or you can do the schedule where the client can actually physically schedule their own appointment. They could pick what date they want on the calendar. They could pick, you know, who the appointment's with. And then they would see the available times for that day for appointments. Okay, now, well, does that integrate with any other calendars? Um, so our calendar, you can push individual appointments to a Google calendar. So we're not integrated with Outlook and it's not like a two way. Well, I use, I use Google, so that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, once you schedule an appointment, you can push it to your Google calendar if that was something that you wanted to do. Yep. Um, so yeah, you would be notified. We also have within our system, 
Uh, we've got appointment confirmation. So when appointments are scheduled, you can send out an email or a text or both to confirm the appointments. And then we also have automated appointment reminders built into our system too. So you can choose, like in our office, we have them go out one day ahead of time as a reminder of their appointment. Um, we've got happy birthday messages that go out, things like that too. That's all. What very about a follow-up email? As far as follow-up for what? After, after, after the appointment. Right now I send out a follow-up email after every appointment um, requesting a review or something like that. Yeah, you absolutely can do that. Um, okay. So we've got we've got it here through the client portal, but you can also automate that too. So I'll show it to you this way, just so you can see what it looks like. So basically, we do the same type of thing every time we've completed a client. You know, we've completed their return or project or whatever it is. We move their file to complete. And then it automatically generates a message that goes out to the client. Same type of thing. You know, how did we do? Would you like to leave us a review? Um, so basically it says, did we meet all your expectations? And then if they say yes, then they can leave reviews on Google, Facebook, or Yelp for your office. Okay. But yes, you can have this. Are those customizable or not? As far as what? Where you can select Google, Facebook, or Yelp. These are the only options you can use. You don't have okay. to use all of them. Um, but these are the only ones that you can use. Okay. Yeah. Are you getting reviews in, an, in another way? Um, QuickBooks Pro Advisor um, is where I get most of my bookkeeping leads. Oh. Um, and Google. Then there's another one that I do too. Okay. I can't think of it at the moment. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, you could use these ones. Yeah. As of right now, these are the only ones that we have. Okay. But, yeah, and you can set it up automated. So like I said, you can move them to a certain status. And then as soon as they get moved to that status, they will automatically get that, that email asking for the review. And then the other piece of it, too, is if they happen to say, um, no, you didn't meet all my expectations. Um, basically, you know, it gives them the option to, you know, give you feedback and, and let you know, but it doesn't actually post to one of those sites. It, it comes into your office internally, so then you can address it. Okay. So, um, this additional links tab or, or section is if you have documents or websites or areas, things that you want your clients to have easy access to. So, it can be like a client organizer or an information sheet or something like that. Okay. Um, and then update my personal information. That's if the client just needs to make a change to any of their personal information, then they can do that there. And then you would get that notification within your office too. Okay. So, so that's what clients are able to do through, through the client portal. Okay. Any questions on that piece? Nope. Okay. Awesome. Oh, self-check-in. That was one that you were interested in, too, wasn't it? So let me go ahead and show you how that works. Okay. So you would just set this up. This would say. So you're going to have to choose, like, a business type, and it will automatically check them into whatever your default business type is when they walk in the door. But you can always change it on their file. So, okay. All right. So a client will come in or a prospect will come in and enter their social security number. So if it's a new client, this will pop up because that means they entered in a social security number that's not in your system. Adam doesn't recognize it. So they can say, yes, I'm a new client. And then it allows them to go ahead and fill out their name. So, and then that checks them into, into the lobby. And you can put some type of note in there, you know, please have a seat or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and then if it's an existing client who uses a self-check-in screen, then what they are going to see, oh, they already put me back. <laughs> so yeah, it'll just, it'll welcome them back and you can again put a note. Um, and then if you have an appointment with somebody, it'll, it'll tell you to go ahead and have a seat and that you'll be with them shortly. 
so it recognizes them. So then what that does on your system, on your side, is they will check into, in our office, we call it a lobby. You can label your, your starting point, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, but you can see that it put that new client right into the lobby. And then you can see how long they've been there. Now, if this was an appointment that I had, if this was an appointment that was for me, and this client walked in, I'm going to see it, see a notification up on the top of my screen that says, mm -hmm. you know what, your 3.30 appointments here. And then a clock will start timing. Okay, they've been here one minute, two minutes, three minutes. So you'll know how long that client has been sitting in the lobby waiting for you. And is there a report that you can pull to see the average? Um, gosh. I mean, it's going to show you here their wait time, and you can see it for individual clients. So you want to know, like, the average wait time in the lobby. Oh, you get it from this. Let me go back to the lobby screen. I think we can get it from this screen. I know our preparation time shows. Yeah, so it shows our average tax prep time. Lobby. Oh, yeah, average wait time. It'll show here. It'll show your totals for the day. Yeah, right here. I don't. Ever, I barely have more than one person in at a time. Oh, right. It's interesting to show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and you'll see it here, too, exactly how long it is. That's what you anyway. Yeah, yeah, so you would see it right there. Okay. Yeah. Yep, so that's how you would, um, clients would, would check themselves in, and then when you're ready, you know, to wait on them, then you would click on their file, and then you would just start moving them, you know, through the process. So whether it was tax prep or, or payroll or resolution, then you would just start moving them through the process. You know, basically like that list that you have in every client's file, you would just recreate that on here and then move them to whatever status that they would need to be in. And then you can leave notes on any one of those statuses so you know, you know, what you've done or what you're waiting on to, to finish with that client. So, so there's that. Um, our appointment calendar from your end to show you what that looks like. So here's an example. So this was, these were the two employees that were working. These are the appointments that were scheduled. Um, so if you're in a client's appointment, you can click here, add to Google Calendar, and then you can push that appointment to the Google Calendar. So that's all you have to do to do that. What about Google Calendar and having it block off that time in the, this calendar? Um, no, but it's, it's not an automatic thing. It's a one-way push from Adam into Google. I mean, you could certainly block off time so if I just needed to block off time because I was going to be out of the office or I had a doctor appointment, you know, I can I can type in doctor appointment or I can type in block and I can go to schedule and I go whatever day and I can say, okay, I'm going to be blocked off at 2.30 for, for 60 minutes. That's for me. And if I wanted to put a note as to what was going on, I could. But then that just blocks off the time right there. But yeah, it's not an automatic thing from Google into here. Okay, so I, I wouldn't be able to use this one then. Do you have a lot of personal stuff on your Google Calendar? I've got like six Google Calendars. <laughs> and I got my husband's got one. Each one of my kids have one, and it's just I too get much it. to be doing individually. Mm -hmm. I, I That's understand. Why I like security is because it syncs with everything. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, and yeah, I can't compete with that. I get it. <laughs> I've I got mean, kids' calendars and family calendars that I manage too. So, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I mean, it's great if you have time to go in and here and block all your all everything. Right. But it's just right, and it just depends on how how it works. Like like I know, you know, from nine to five every day, I'm at work, and you know, my, all the appointments I have are work related. Um, you know, my family stuff's usually, you know, evenings and weekends and stuff like that. So for me to keep that on a separate calendar works for me. So, but, um, you know, being self-employed, you probably have a little bit more overlap between those things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, then that makes sense. And you would certainly be able to, um, through the client portal end of things, you could remove those links um, for the appointments options and then the clients okay. wouldn't, wouldn't see those. So that wouldn't, wouldn't be confusing to them at any could I way. Could I redirect them to my Acuity? <laughs> well, oh, from our, from our portal? Yeah. You actually probably could if you did it under this additional links. You actually could put a description here that says appointment and then put your link to it. Schedule appointment. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Yep. That would absolutely work for you. Yeah. Yep. So, and then you could use, like, we would provide a link, you know, on your website and it can be appointments and it can still direct them here. And you can even label this that says appointments. You know what I mean? So, you, I think you mm -hmm. can change the name of the additional links. That one we might not be able to. Yeah. Let me double check on that one before I tell you. Uh, and then yeah you can yep yeah you can put a custom name on there so yeah you could change that to schedule an appointment and then that would just have the link to go to your other calendar so yeah that would work for you mm -hmm. okay good <laughs> nice um Okay, so I feel like we've kind of covered, we've talked about the marketing stuff, CRM. You know, we didn't talk a ton about, um, like, like you were talking about, like, you know, contacting clients or um, sending, do you send them a lot of notifications or reminders of, of things that they have to give to you or things like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can send that, you can create that. You can even create it uh, and have it automated for maybe, like, for your bookkeeping clients, you know, maybe on the first of every month, you want to send a notification that says, you know, hey, it's not yeah, yeah, it can just automatically <laughs> go out and you don't have to worry about it. So you can have it go out, you know, every 30 days or something, you know, some of your financials and, and you could definitely automate that process. So, so, and the things will go out through, through email or through text. Uh, as notifications. The texting feature, though, just to let you know, it is um, a separate piece of our software. We are integrated with another company with Twilio, so there is a small charge for the, for the texting part of our software. It does, it's minimal. It does end up being like, you know, a half a cent per text, so it's, it's pretty small. Okay. Just to let you know that. So... Uh, did the self-check-in, project management, portable prospects... All right. What other questions do you have that I can um, answer for you or show you? With this, how long does it take to get everything set up? Yeah. So on our end, um, it generally takes about one to two business days. So once we get the contract, we send uh, the information over to our programmers, and it generally takes about one to two business days for them to start the setup process. And then you'll start getting emails from us that will say, you know. This, this is your site, this is your, um, this is your login information, and then we'll start sending you, you know, let's set up some training, let's get your uh, clients in there. So the process generally moves pretty fast. We definitely like to set up training, you know, within about the first week so we can get you into the system and get you using it right away. Okay. So we do have unlimited training and we do have help videos built in throughout the whole software too. And then we'll set up training times like this. We'll do it live and do it through GoToMeeting and be logged into your site to help you, you know, customize and set up your site for you, for your office. Okay. Yeah. And then as far as um, pricing, and I'll go, I'll put all of this in an email too, just to follow up. And then you can show it to your husband and everything too. Um, on our website here, we've got a pricing tab and we do have two options. We have a, an annual fee of $7.99, or we have a monthly payment option of $79 a month, and they both include the unlimited users, unlimited clients, unlimited document storage, e-signatures, all of that's included. There is a one-time setup fee, non-refundable setup fee of $300, which includes all the onboarding process as far as getting everything set up for you and getting it all integrated, and then you would have the choice of doing the annual fee or $79 a month. Okay. Yeah. So that's how our pricing works. So, any other questions or anything else you want to see that we haven't covered? 
Um, no, I'm trying to think of something he would ask. So. <laughs> uh, that's all I can think of. Okay. Well, you know, if you think of anything else or after, you know, I, after I send this recording over and he's had a chance to, to look at it, you know, feel free to, you know, send us an email or give us a call or if we need to schedule a time because he wants to see something, no, that's fine too. We have no problem with that. Yeah, he worked. He worked in the evening. I mean, during the day, he has a real job. <laughs> this is my job, right? But because he does, he 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 works in the IT industry. Oh, gotcha. And he does all my IT here, right? And then he's fifty percent partner, so he, I, I try to include him in everything. And they said that three o'clock was the latest they would do any um, oh, demo. Okay. Right, right. And I was ho he, we were hoping he'd be able to join in on it. Sure. But he wasn't. Yeah, yeah. And if we need to make special arrangements at some point, especially if it's a, you know, a smaller demo, you know, a lot of times we can make a special arrangement for an evening or a weekend time if we need to. Just just let us know. I have no problem with that. So, okay, we can certainly do that. So, okay, well, if you don't have any other questions, then like I said, I will, um, you know, I'll, I'll get this this recording done and then I will send it over to you guys and I'll just send you the information about the pricing. And then, like I said, feel free to reach out to us if you guys have any other questions. Okay. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, Carrie. You have a good day. You too. Thank you. All right. Bye.